Camille here and I am so thankful to be able to share what I have been learning in the subject matter of how Christians should address racism. And it's been given to me a subtitle that basically summarizes up what we need to do as believers. And that is uproot what's been ingrained because a lot of what we're dealing with in racism all has to do with what's been ingrained in us from generation to generation. So with that being said, I'm just going to start off with this premise that I have here. And it says, we are all God's children that need to be reconciled and we need to first be the change we want to see. We need to uproot what has been ingrained in us from generation to generation and adopt the true culture that God has called us to live. All right, so I'm going to start off with talking about my personal experience in this whole realm of racism. Now, I never like to think of myself as a racist person or like race conscious or whatever. Like I used to be like, I don't see color. I don't think anyone is different. Like we're all God's children. And if we just all come together and worship and pray and sing, then we'll all be okay. Which is not wrong and it's empowering, but you know, this whole thing with George Floyd, really, it just put me in a place where I was just like, okay, I have been walking in ignorance. I have been turning a blind eye. And yes, so my background is, you know, I come from a Caribbean background. Both of my parents are from Jamaica. I hope you can hear me over this construction. Um, <laughs> But my parents came from Jamaica. So with that being said, we never really had like a super knowledge of American history and whatnot. We never really, you know, had that connection and that tie to America. Like it just wasn't a thing. So, you know, I would go throughout life, you know, not wanting to take part in, you know, the woke culture or you know, I didn't even want to watch movies like Get Out or The Hate You Give or anything of that nature because in my heart, you know, especially as a follower of Christ, I was just like, I want to have love for all people. I want to have, you know, love and respect for all cultures and nations because I really do love nations. I love the idea of all of the nations coming together in the name of God and being united and just being together because God created us differently for a reason. Like he, if he wanted us all to be the same, we would have been the same. So I just needed to just not expose myself to these things because I knew that if I exposed myself to these things, then I would have a hatred towards the white community. And that is not what I wanted. Um, with all that, you know, happening, you know, with me being intentional on like not exposing myself to those things, I have still dealt with some insecurities on being black. Like, unfortunately, like there's been instances in life where I question, I'm like, huh, I wonder why. Is it because I'm black? Like even here in community, like there's been instances where I just felt some type of way and the thought would come to mind where I wondered, is it because I'm black? You know, I felt times of inadequacy. I felt times of being less than, you know, and it can very well be because of, you know, things that has been ingrained when, ingrained into my mind and, to, and into the culture where we're just taught to believe because you are a different color other than white, you have to work harder, you have to think smarter, you have to do this, that, and the third, and whatever you do is never enough, you know, and that has come across my mind a lot, and unfortunately, I can say that I'm in a place where I am now 
because I lack self-esteem. I lack belief in myself because of the nuances and you know just the ingrained mindset of being less than. Even though I never had, I don't think I've ever had a blatant instance of racism being shown towards me. I can't think of of any um, instances, to be honest. And maybe that's just a suppression or something. I don't know. But yeah, I can't think of an instance. But, you know, with the execution of George Floyd, you know, it just caused me to realize that, yo, there is an issue here. You know, this is honestly deeper than race, I think. I think it is a matter of a lack of regard to humanity. There's a lack of regard to humanity. And um, unfortunately, you know, it seems that the black race is the targeted race. But I don't even want to, like, just, you know, lump it all in just the black society. I mean, minorities, too. I watched this, you know, little documentary about Native Americans, how they've been, you know, treated by, you know, police brutality and all that stuff. And how they didn't, <laughs> they felt that they were being persecuted because they weren't worshiping a white Jesus. And that's another point I want to just... I mean, we can talk about this thing for hours, you know, but that's another thing, like the portrayal of Jesus being white. There were three pictures in our house, in my home, and they were all that, you know, that soft eyed, brown haired Jesus. And, you know, with all of this happening, I was like, well, you know, that is, that is interesting, you know, with the white supremacy and, you know, white man being our savior and just I mean we decided to get rid of them because we're like you know what we don't know what Jesus looks like you know I used to be like oh I don't care if he's white I don't care if he's black I don't care and I still don't but it's just the idea of one race being exemplified within my savior where I was just like okay this could be an issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we got rid of that. And the fact that people aren't coming to Christ because of that ideal of Jesus being white, that's like a blocking point for them to get to know the savior of the world. Like that's a problem. That's an issue. So it's just all of these ingrained assumptions and just, you know, cultural things that's been put in, them, in us where it's caused me to, you know, no longer turn a blind eye to this matter. Like, this is something that we have to work intentionally to uproot, to get rid of, and to pick up the culture of God. Okay? So, you know, I've been watching things like 13th, it talks about the 13th Amendment. I, I watched the movie Just Mercy. You know, I've watched self-made. So I've just really just been slowly but surely just downloading more of like just this knowledge of what's been going on in this country that I have not been aware of because I just wanted to be friends with everybody. <laughs> but that's caused me to turn my back on a whole community that's been hurting for a long, long time long time and I also want to mention that with that you know I'm Caribbean and I tend to look at African Americans as different because you know honestly culturally Caribbeans do things that African Americans don't Caribbeans do say things that African Americans don't like there's just a difference there and there's been incidents in my life I have to say I face more <laughs> um Okay, yes, I faced racial injustice within the black community more so than of people of another race. Like, it's crazy. So that difference right there, like, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot, but I'm going to get through it because at the end of the day, it's all about humanity. And, you 
know, uprooting what's been ingrained. So what does God want us to do about this? Okay, so first of all, we need to be honest. And that is something that I had to do. I had to look within myself. I had to sit down and reflect and just really think about where I am, what's been going on, what I've been thinking, what's been taught to me, what's been said that I took to heart, that I've carried on over the years, and really take an inventory and to realize like, yo, okay, this is something that matters to you, God, to you. So Hebrews 4, 15, 16 says, this high priest of ours, which is Jesus, understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, and there we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. God wants to help us in this. We are not meant to do this alone. So first, be honest with him. Be vulnerable. Voice all that you're thinking. Don't think that you have to put on this mask. Oh, I'm a Christian and I love everybody. Love God, love myself and love others. Ooh, it's all good. No, you got to be real. What are the thoughts that you had in your mind? What are the, 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 the feelings that you had towards, you know, people? Like, you got to bring it to light. You got to bring it to light. You have to confess it. You have to admit it. Because none of us are perfect. Only Jesus was and is. Okay? So understand that we need not look to organizations, which is the government, society, or the church, but to ourselves, the organism, if we want to see a change in this regard. We cannot look to these organizations, y'all. We can't, because this is something that's been ingrained generations to generations. I mean, there's been systemic laws and plans and agendas that's been taking place to keep the oppression like relevant and still working to this day. So we have to be the change. We have to be the change. We need to be God's children with his culture. Romans 12, two says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. If you know me, you probably say, you know what, you talk about the way you think a lot. Stuff about the mind comes up a lot. And I found that out about myself probably since last year, where I've come to the revelation that a lot of the issues that we go through in life comes from here, our minds. It's a powerful, powerful thing to know and acknowledge and to fight because that is the ultimate battleground, our mind. That's where the enemy camps out in, and that's where he gets most of what he wants, our minds. So definitely, 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 you know, through God's word, we got to change the way we think, uproot what's been ingrained. We have ingrained assumptions and beliefs beliefs about one another. This is just another tactic of the enemy, for God never intended for us to be divided on this side of heaven. Yes, we will reunite, reunite as all nations professing his glory, but we are called to reconcile people. We are called to reconcile people to him. Highlighted it, bolded it, because it just says people. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 19 says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. And I just want to brush on the fact that it says people. It didn't say a certain type of race. It didn't say a certain type of gender orientation. It didn't say a certain type of religion. It said people, point blank, period, period. All right, so what do we need to do? We need to live dangerously. Live life comfortably uncomfortable. This is the new normal. With this whole pandemic, we've been learning a new normal, haven't we? 
have to walk, have, have to have masks on. We have to sanitize more often. We have to wash our hands more often. Like hygiene, y'all. Hygiene. Okay. So with this being, you know, the new normal as well, now we have to be intentional. Okay. We have to take risk. And this is a little acronym that I have here. Relationship. We have to aim at right relationships, different backgrounds, beliefs, sexual orientation, etc., and stand on us being human. We are human first. Before we have all these, you know, preferences or race, I mean, we're human first. We have to give a listening ear. We have to invest in people. Jesus did this in John 4 with the Samaritan woman. Jews and Samaritans didn't jive. They didn't mix well. But he decided to engage in humanity. He engaged in her spiritual and personal needs. And he engaged in race with her. Check it out. John 4. All right? Then I, we need to be intentional. Racism is learned, not picked up. We have to praise, we have to pray for those who don't look like us. It's hard to, like, I don't want to say hate, that's a strong word, but it's hard to have like assumptions and preconceived notions about people and prejudices when you're praying for them. I'm telling you, we have to uproot what's been ingrained. We become new creatures, so now we have to move into new things and behaviors. S, start at home. Have these conversations. If you already have these conversations, speak up. Use your influence for there are people who can't speak for themselves. Don't just say anything, pray first. In 1 Peter 3, 15 to 17, instead you must worship Christ as Lord of your, of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good if that is what God wants than to suffer for doing wrong. And then lastly, K, knowledge. Keep learning and don't allow things to happen. Like me, I was ignorant. I've never been more keen to entertaining the fact of being more involved in the knowledge of politics than now because I realize, you know, just being a believer, serving in a church and all that, that's great, but we need to be connected to what's going on outside too. We can't be in a bubble. We got to get out. We got to be the light. And it takes getting into these uncomfortable realms that we're not familiar with, learning about it, and being the change, the difference. And we cannot know what is right to stand up for unless we get knowledge from the word first. We need to learn God's characters. We need to learn his ways. We need to know his truth. Because if we don't know his truth that comes from this word right here, this is old faithful. If we don't know his truth, then we won't know what to stand for. So this is a great weeding mechanism for what's all that's been paraded out there into the, in the world so we know what we can just flick to the side, okay? We need to stay aware. Please don't live under a rock like I do. I'm still learning. This is going to, you know, it's a process. And we need to keep this relevant. This is going to die down. But we still need to continue to have the conversations. Continue to have relationships outside of people that look like us, believe like us, think like us. And I'm just going to leave you all with this. We are all God's children that need to be reconciled. And we need to first be the change we want to see. We need to uproot what has been ingrained in us from generation to generation and adopt the true culture that God has called us to live. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your power, for your glory, and for the time that we are in right now where you have gone before us and you are protecting us, you are guiding us, you are stretching us, dear God, stretching us so that we can be even better feet and hands, hands and feet of Christ on this side of heaven. Lord, I speak unity. I speak an open heart. And I just speak, Father Lord, 
that we have a heart that is yours, of yours. Because at the end of the day, it's all about your love. So I love you, Lord. I thank you. Bless each and every individual who is listening to this, who is watching this. And let us become the change that we want to see. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. My name is Camille. And thank you for attending my TED Talk. <laughs>